So you're looking to buy a house. What do you need to budget in order to buy a house in today's market? Stay tuned. Hey, Brooke the Broker here. So you're buying a house and there are four things you need to have cash for when you're buying a house in today's market. The very first thing is the obvious thing, your down payment. There are so many different loan programs on, out there. So a down payment is not necessarily 20% every single time, but you need to have that cash on hand. And in some instances, for some types of loans, you need to have double the amount of your down payment. So if you don't have cash, you need to start saving cash for your upcoming down payment. Number two, you need to have money to make a good faith deposit when you are making an offer on a home. This is something people totally forget about. When you are making an offer on a home, the offer is in writing. And if your offer is accepted, part of your offer was a promise that you would deposit a few thousand dollars, maybe even more, into an escrow account that serves as your good faith. In other words, you're telling the seller, listen, I am very serious about buying this home. I'm putting all this money on the line. And if I back out of buying this home for any reason other than a contingency, this money belongs to you, seller. So you need to have the cash. Real estate agents use the words, we will hold it in our escrow account. They don't mean hold the check. <laughs> They're holding the money. The money, the check will be deposited. So you need to be prepared for that. In our current market environment, I have been advising my buyer clients that the minimum amount of an earnest money check should be 1% of the purchase price of the home. So think about the budget you're looking at for your purchase. And 1% of that is the least amount of earnest money you need to be offering in today's market. Number three, you have some out-of-pocket expenses during the contract to closing period. And two or three of these expenses come out of your pocket when the service is provided. So what are these services? Number one, you're going to have an appraisal on the property and the appraiser needs to be paid when they do the appraisal. So you will have to pay for your appraiser during the process. It is not a closing cost. This is an out-of-pocket cost that is done before the closing. If you are having an inspection of the property, you need to pay the inspector. You need to pay the inspector when he goes and he inspects the home. He is not waiting until closing. What if it doesn't close? He gets paid at his inspection time. And the third time is if you have additional inspections going on at the property. So an example would be if the property is in the country and it has uh, a septic system, you're gonna have to pay the septic company up front. If they have a well for the water source as opposed to public water and sewer, that water needs to be tested. Uh, this is a negotiable piece. Sometimes the sellers will do it, sometimes the buyers will do it. But if you as a buyer in your offer say, I'll test the well and I'll inspect the well, that's an out-of-pocket expense for you. And another out-of-pocket expense for you is if you're doing a termite inspection, you would have to pay a termite inspection as well. Many times the termite inspection can be rolled into the closing, uh, but some companies require payment when they provide the service. So those are costs that you will incur during that contract to closing period. The fourth thing you need cash for in today's market is your own closing costs. Now, when the real estate market is more of a buyer's market than a seller's market, which is not what we're experiencing right now, but when that is the case, many times a buyer can negotiate with the seller that a buyer can basically roll their closing costs into the purchase price and the mortgage of the loan. 
But in today's market, that is not happening because if you ask the seller to pay your closing costs, that means the seller is making less money on the sale. And if you're up against another offer, that looks very unattractive to a seller. So as a buyer, you need to be prepared to pay your own closing costs. Your lender will give you a detailed list of what your closing costs are. And by law, that has to be within a very small percentage of what the actual final closing costs are. So rule of thumb, if you haven't met with a lender yet and you're not sure if you're ready or how much money you need to save in the meantime, I always tell my clients plan on about two and a half to 3% of your purchase price will be what your closing costs are going to be. Now that is if you're using a mortgage. The majority of your closing costs as a buyer are associated with the mortgage process. If you are buying a home with cash, your closing costs are a little bit different. And we can talk about that in another episode. Uh, but if you're buying with a mortgage, that's when you should estimate your closing costs are going to be about two and a half to three percent. And here's a bonus. Number five, the bonus. You kind of need to prepare for moving. And a lot of people forget about that. And that is way expensive, especially if you're moving across the state or you're moving across the country. So you need to plan your budget for your actual move. If you're doing it yourself, you still need to rent the U-Haul. You still need to clean the place. You still need to have boxes and paper and time and all that stuff. And if you're having a full concierge move with people are packing all your things and putting it in the truck and all that kind of stuff, that's a lot of money. And again, you have to pay that. So bonus, be prepared for the cost of your actual move from one place to the other. I hope these four plus one bonus tip help you figure out your budget. And if you need to put a plan together, a financial plan together, so that you can save this money and you have it ready to go, and you're not tapping into your family's emergency fund, do not do that. You are not cashing out 401ks or retirement plans to do this, bad idea. Uh, but if you need help putting a plan together, reach out to me. One of the things I pride myself on is I am one of the Ramsey trusted, and many of you have heard of Dave Ramsey before. I'm one of the Ramsey trusted realtors in the Fredericksburg area. And I do know some Ramsey trusted financial coaches who can help you put a plan together so you can save this cash and you are ready to go in this market. This market requires the most amount of out-of-pocket cash of a buyer that I've ever seen in my 20 years in business, okay? So I don't think it's gonna get worse than this for a buyer. It could only get better, but hey, if you have all this money saved up and you don't use it, hey, that's even better. So please reach out if you need help putting your budget together. I will connect you with some good people here locally who can help you with that. But I need to make sure you understand in this current market that you absolutely need to have cash ready to go. I'll see you next time.